Hey, West Campus family, Pastor Tommy here. Thanks for tuning, tuning in today uh, with this online virtual worship service, week two of this. Uh, as I've shared in an email, uh, we don't go to church. We, we are the church. Uh, we get that, but it sure is nice to gather together uh, in one place being together. And so again, uh, I miss you, but thanks for tuning in today. A couple of things I wanted to share with you. Uh, if you're not plugged into a life group, this is a great opportunity to stay connected. Uh, our Sunday mo morning life groups are connecting uh, with one another through uh, Zoom and Google Chat. So if you're not in the life group, uh, you can email me, Tommy at fbcmcdonough.com and uh, we can find a group for you. I love our life groups. We also have two groups, two new groups that are forming. Uh, Randy Dodd uh, has a new group, a men's group, starting Sunday night, uh, March the 29th at 6 p.m. Again, they're gonna keep that group under 10 people. Uh, they're gonna be studying the book of Proverbs, and so that'll be 6 p.m. Sunday night, March 29th, as well as a women's group that's gonna be starting um, soon, uh, Julie Beecham and Brenda Bear are starting this group. They don't have a set day, uh, time yet, but any lady that's interested in it, they're going to be uh, studying a book uh, by, by Rick, Rick Warren called The 40 Days of Prayer. So excited about those. Any information on those whatsoever, you can email me at tommy at fbcmcdonough.com. Uh, final thing I want to say is thank you for your giving. Uh, obviously, we don't gather, we're not passing the plate, and so we've had an opportunity to give online, but now more than ever, thank you for your giving. Uh, you can go to fbcmcdonough.com backslash giving, or even just our website, fbcmcdonough.com, and there's a, there's a tab there called giving, and you can give online. We certainly appreciate that uh, as we continue to meet needs in our community. Thank you for your generosity. And thank you again for tuning in as we continue in our time of worship.
and 50. It says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the flute and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and flutes. Praise him with the loud cymbals. Praise him with the crashing cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
this message in the morning, Sunday morning at 1030 uh, or, or later throughout the day. That's the beauty of technology, but welcome. I want to share with you some things I've been re reflecting on, some things that I've been learning as we've been dealing with this pandemic, this COVID-19 corona uh, crisis. One of the things that I, I'm learning is that growth comes through, through pain. Growth comes through pain, and pain comes in two forms. There is the pain that we inflict upon ourself. Uh, we, we know that as discipline. For example, I go work out, I, I, I pump iron, I get on a treadmill. I'm inflicting some pain on my body. You've heard the old adage, no pain, no gain. That is, that is called discipline. But there's other pain that comes upon us, which we don't choose, but it comes upon us anyway. We know those that, that kind of pain is known as, as trials. And what, what I want us to learn through this is that I don't want to waste this trial that we're going through with this COVID-19 trial. What are some things uh, that we can learn through this? Well, the first is uh, the illusion of control. Control is, is an illusion. We are not in control. One of the, a very popular song by Frank Sinatra is, is I Did It My Way. And in fact, I read recently that is one of the most popular songs uh, at, at funerals in, in, in England. I did it my way, which I find very, very ironic. Uh, but there is an illusion of control that we've all been living under uh, for, for some time. In fact, I think many people, uh, in, in my experience, come to Christ through a crisis, through a trial, because the illusion of control has been shattered. I've talked with a number of people. I've lived in several places throughout my life, whether they, whether in the north or the south or, or out in Texas, people with education, middle to upper income levels, people that are well off financially, uh, oftentimes they assume a level of control. And, and when that illusion is shattered, it may be a job loss, a, a health crisis, it, COVID-19 for example, it may be a, a marital crisis. When, when that illusion of control is shattered, people come to know Jesus. I want to share with you a story in Luke chapter 12, very familiar to many of you, about a man, a rich man, who was living under an illusion of control. Jesus shares this parable in Luke chapter 12, starting verse 15. Jesus said, watch out and be on, on guard against all kinds of greed, because one's life is not in the abundance of his possessions. Then he told them a parable. He says, a rich man's land was very productive. He thought to himself, what should I do since I don't have anywhere to store my crops? I will do this. He said, I'll tear down my barns and, and build bigger ones and, and store all my grain and my goods there. You see, this man was under an illusion of control. He had everything he needed. He was just going to sit back and relax. 
But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? That's how it is with the one who stores up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. You see, this man was living under an illusion of control, and God tells him, You fool, you fool, because this very night his life would be demanded of him. He was living under that illusion of control, and death shattered everything. Folks, we do not possess the power to control or sustain our lives. And what Jesus is telling us, trusting in our, in our own resources, in our own strength, is, is absolutely foolish. I, we, we ought to surrender our lives to the control of Jesus Christ. That's what we mean when, when we say He is Lord of our lives. He, he is un, we're under His control. And recognizing that we're under this illusion of control and surrendering our lives to God, that's the beginning of faith. And oftentimes, uh, we need a crisis in our lives, a trial to go through to see our need uh, for, for Jesus. Because oftentimes, we are attempting to control uh, our own lives. And that is absolutely foolish. Many people are uh, addicted to substances. And there's a lot of people that are... They may not be addicted to substances, but they are addicted to power and wealth and comfort and in the, in the belief that, that they can control their lives. Many people seek to, to put their trust in their own strength rather than in the strength of Jesus. And folks, we need to wake up from our foolishness. I, I've been reading a lot on the internet recently with everything going on. And in fact, just today I read about a man who leads a Bible study in Washington, D.C. with some, some officials who actually work in, in the White House. And this, this man said that everything going on, he believes that it is God's judgment on our nation. And that very well may be, but I would say it also may be God's grace. It may be God's grace in that God is opening our eyes, revealing our pride, and softening hearts, getting us to slow down, and, and, and helping us recognize we don't have control. I think that's a great lesson to learn, and I do believe that that is God's grace. That's an illusion that many of us are under, this illusion of control. The second lesson that God is teaching me is this illusion of strength. Illusion of strength. Many of you are familiar uh, with David and Goliath in 1 Samuel 17, where this Philistine warrior, great and mighty, he was a wartime machine. Some scholars say he, he may have been up to nine, he, uh, up to nine feet tall. This, this text here in 1 Sam, uh, Samuel 17 presents Goliath as unbeatable. Uh, he could over, overpower anyone with a sword or spear. And yet here was this boy named David who had no sword or spear. In fact, when they tried to put armor on him, uh, it weighed, weighed him down. He was simply a shepherd boy with a sling and some rocks. His opponent, Goliath, strong in strength and, and, and size. But that, that strength that he had, the size that he had, actually was Goliath's weakness. Because as big as he was and as tall as he was, he had a, no doubt a large forehead. <laughs> that, was a, that was an easy target. For David. In fact, you pick up in 1 Samuel 17, verse 48. It says, When the Philistines started toward to attack him to David, David ran quickly to the battle, battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in the bag, took out a stone, slung it, and hit the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down to the ground. David defeated the Philistine with a sling and a stone. David overpowered the Philistine and killed him without having a sword. Don't miss this. Don't, don't miss that. He killed the Philistine without having a sword. You see, one of the illusions that we're living under oftentimes is, is this illusion of, of strength. You see, from all outward appearances, Goliath appeared unbeatable. And from all outward appearances, David appeared weak. And yet... In reality, David possessed all the qualities he needed to defeat this, this giant. I've been thinking about the, the illusion of strength, and, and especially here at our West Campus. You know, we're, we're not the, the, the largest church in town. In fact, we're, we're a small church. And from all outward appearances, we can look at our West Campus and, and say, well, we're a small church. What impact can we make? And I would say, we can make a big impact. 
Because the same power, as Paul says in Ephesians, is the same power that raised Christ from the dead is the power that we have available to us. And so there's, there's, there's a big impact that we can, we can make as a small church. You may be at home and, and, and just looking at your own life and, and, and saying, what can, what can I do with my life? How can I make an impact? It's just a little old me. And I would say, don't discount what God can do through a person who is faithful, through a person who is available, through a person who is teachable. That's a lesson that God is teaching me, the illusion of strength. Third and final lesson I want to share with you is the illusion of activity. So, as I was looking at the West Campus calendar, the calendar of events, we had a, some great things coming, coming down the pipe. We had uh, the Spring Fling. We had the, um, the Good Friday walkthrough. We, we had the career day at Dutchtown. Uh, and all of these things have been canceled. And as I speak today, uh, the mission trip to Wisconsin, it's also on the bubble. We just don't know. In fact, I, I just read in the news this week that the Southern Baptist Convention's annual meeting in Orlando has also been canceled uh, in June. A lot of things have been canceled. And the thing about it is, especially the events here at our West Campus, the coronavirus has affected all of these Events. These events have been canceled because of the coronavirus. And yet, from everything I understand, not one case of coronavirus has been detected here at our West Campus by God's grace. But nevertheless, it has affected everything here. And we've had to cancel things here at our West Campus. Here's a lesson. You know, many of us, including myself, we're bent towards action. We want to directly affect our world or, and affect our community to improve, to solve problems. And we want to do God's will on, on, on earth as it's done in heaven. And this whole COVID-19 pandemic has, has directly affected our, our ability to, to go and, and act. I think about Pray and Go. We've been going out on Sundays at 2 p.m. and praying over homes and, and leaving door hangers. And even that, I've been advised not to do that. In fact, a staff member said, don't go do that in the community, in your own neighborhood. You're going to get shot. And so I can't even do that. And, and, and so I'm just sitting in my, my home office going, what do I do? What can I do? How can I love my neighbor if I'm having to practice social distancing from my neighbor? How can I change the, the world? How can I change my community if I'm con quarantined from my community? And I'll tell you the lesson that God is teaching. This unexpected quarantine reminds all of us that outward activity doesn't always affect, and it's not the only way to affect the world and, and our own community. There, there is a, there's a powerful yet mysterious force available to all of us. And that power it's prayer. It's prayer. Mark chapter 1, verse 35, one of my favorite passages about Jesus and his example to us. It says, very, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, went off to a solitary place, and he prayed. And he prayed. Folks, we can be so focused on outward activity, good things, no doubt, but we can be so focused on the outward activities that we can dismiss the value of prayer. We can dismiss it. Prayer is the power which we have available to us that we can change our world, we can, we can change our community even when we're locked away from it. Don't dismiss the value of prayer. So those are some lessons that God is teaching me. The illusion of control, the illusion of strength, and the illusion of activity. Don't dismiss the power of prayer. Maybe you're watching this and you have been living life and uh, you've been doing things your own way as Frank Sinatra sang. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, 6, we all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way and God has laid the iniquity, the sin of us all on him. You see, when we go our own way, when we do our own thing, that's shaking our fists at God and say, I don't need you. And the Bible calls that sin. And maybe you're watching today and, and you've been doing it your own way. You've rebelled against a holy and righteous God. And the Bible says that is sin. And the Bible says that you deserve punishment 
when you rebel against a holy and righteous God. And maybe for the first time in your life, God's gotten your attention through this pandemic. And you realize maybe for the first time that you're not in control. And you realize that, that you're a sinner and, and you're in need of a Savior. If that's you today, if you realize that you're a sinner, you need a Savior. And maybe for the first time, you just throw up the white flag and say, I surrender. I, I, want, I want Jesus Christ to be Lord of my life, director, the boss, because He's in control. He's sovereign anyway. And I yield my life to Him. If you're at that point today, I want to lead you in, 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 a, in a short prayer. Will you pray with me? You pray these, these words. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I've rebelled against a holy and righteous God. I'm sorry for my sin. Will you forgive me? I want to follow you, Lord Jesus, from this day forward. I want to turn from my sin. And I want, and I want to turn to Jesus Christ. I want to follow you from this day forward. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. It's in your name I pray. Amen and amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. You're my brother. You're my sister in Christ. And here's what I want you to do for me. On your screen, uh, we're going to place my number, my, my mobile number, which is area code 864-630-9459. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to text me right now. Don't wait. Do it right now and say, Pastor Tommy, I became a Christian today. That would bring me great joy and I'll... I'd be happy to follow up with you and send you some follow-up information to get you on uh, that path on how you can grow in your faith, how you can learn what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. That would be my, my, my great joy to send you that info. Thanks so much, and may God bless you today.